Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please give me a like down below, and go and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you didn't like this video, please let me know down in the comments. Always looking to improve. Today we're going to be looking at another requested Kurtzkazat video called What if the world turned into gold? The gold apocalypse, the old Midas touch. Let's take a look. Here in the Kurtzkazat labs, we only work on the most important scientific problems like what if we nuke stuff? Or how about we make this elephant explode? Or who could forget? Look at this thing, it's really big. Continuing this proud tradition, let's explore the scientific... I've done several reaction videos to the what if we nuke stuff approach. So yes, that's a great one. <laughs> History of what would happen to you if Earth suddenly turned into gold. The Midas apocalypse, based on the ancient tale of King Midas, who was cursed so everything he touched turned into gold. Before we can explore this scenario with science, we'll first define the premise. Midas's curse is a very special phenomenon called magic, which allows us to modify... The person who recommended this to me was in a comment about, hey, they used magic to make the moon uh, crash into the earth, but it's like, hey, this isn't the first time they've used magic. That is awesome. <laughs> Making a video on functional magic. Six. So what happens when Midas touches something and it turns to gold? An atom of gold has 79 protons and 118 neutrons in its nucleus. The electric force of the protons on the electrons around them... Interesting, the part that makes gold gold is the 70... What was it? 78 proto protons? That's... That's all it takes, is the number of protons, is what gives it its definition. It's fascinating. <laughs> ...shapes the atom and gives gold its chemical properties, like that it doesn't rust, and that it's kind of shiny and bendy. So, to make not gold into gold, we have to change atoms. Let's say Midas touches a duck. All the light elements, like hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen, gain electrons and protons and neutrons to become <laughs> gold. Not only is the duck suddenly 33 times more massive, it's also much too dense. The gold atoms are far closer together than they like and repel each other violently, causing the golden duck to explode with the energy of half a ton of TNT, leaving only gold dust and a very dead Midas. This is clearly not a very good way for Midas's power to work. So what if instead... I love that. Yeah, just make the atoms more dense and yeah, that's exactly... Um... How it would work is just things just get that much more heavy. Mm. His power uses the atoms that are already present and simply rearranges all particles in the matter he touches into gold. No matter is created or destroyed, instead, atoms dissolve and the protons, neutrons, and electrons are reassembled to make gold. However, gold is very dense, about 20 times denser than a duck. Without adding any matter, the gold duck would be a very awkward kind of foamy gold with lots of tiny microscopic gap. That was interesting. I thought they were just going to make the duck really small. It would just shrink by a factor of 20. <laughs> this is funky and doesn't explode, which is progress. Now that we've established a sort of magic that works, what would happen if Midas stumbles? What if he touches Earth itself? Let's freeze time. So is it his finger that does it? Because I guess if he walks around his feet, or maybe because he's wearing shoes, they don't turn to gold. Or maybe he has golden shoes. Ah, best not think about it too much. Just a moment, and rearrange all the matter in the Earth. Just like the duck, the Earth is now solid gold, but with many tiny atomic scale gaps. While these gaps weren't a huge deal for the duck, they're a big problem for the Earth. A spongy planet is not a thing that can exist, as gravity compresses Earth, squeezing it together to close up the gaps. As a result, the Earth contracts, shrinking to two-thirds of its radius. If you're standing on Earth's surface, you'll suddenly find yourself in freefall, like on a roller coaster, as the ground sinks away beneath you. 
but since the ground is falling too, it doesn't move away from you. It feels like someone turned off gravity, and you and everything else would begin to float. But the ride doesn't last forever. It takes only 10 minutes for everything to crash down, and a weird 10 minutes it is indeed. And then, as abruptly as it started, it stops. The collapsing Earth has reached its desired size, and gravity is suddenly turned back on for you. Hopefully you enjoyed your minutes of floating, because the ground and you with it crash into the planet at 30,000 kilometers an hour, making your body spatter like a water balloon as it hits. So it's shrinking the planet, but it's not shrinking everything with the planet, causing this sort of phenomena. Okay. In one instant, basically all of humanity gets smashed into red puddles. This is only the start of our problems, though, since Earth imploded supersonically. The kinetic energy of the implosion is basically equivalent to detonating a planet made of TNT. Crushed together under incredible forces, Earth's core reaches a million degrees. Hmm. I did ju I just made a video on um, what would it take to destroy the Earth with nuclear weapons, and I guess shrinking it by a third would require a similar order of order of magnitude to in terms of energy release to do something like that. That's <laughs> an interesting coincidence. <laughs> Yes, a temperature closer to the core of a star than anything we're used to finding on Earth. As the Earth crashes into itself, it generates an enormously powerful shock wave which plows upwards, catapulting the atmosphere up and off. The Earth's surface temperature reaches hundreds of thousands of degrees, and everything on it is instantly vaporized to a fluffy plasma cloud that starts to expand, but not by much. Many of the atoms that may have been new get mixed into this cloud, while others boil off, escaping from the atmosphere. The golden plasma outshines the sun, while the enormous radiation lifts tons of material off into space. Over the coming days, the plasma cloud cools and eventually freezes into a shiny little golden ball. Okay, maybe this... So some of that depends on the, the initial delay how this magic exactly works and shrieking over the course of 10 minutes, the heat generated, yeah. <laughs> it's a funny thought experiment. I have to give them credit plus points for creativity. ...of magic doesn't work. So if replacing atoms made the Earth so overdense that it exploded, and disassembling and reassembling atoms made the Earth so underdense that it imploded, there must be a sweet spot where the Earth does neither. What if Midas's power is such that an object is suddenly replaced by an object with the same volume, made from solid gold? That magic is a little bit more magic, and cuts a few extra corners, but let's see where this leads us. So, Midas stumbles again. Even though our new pure gold Earth is not expanding or contracting, it's suddenly much more massive. The density of gold is three and a half times greater than the Earth, meaning the Earth is going to get three and a half times more massive. For starters, everyone now has to contend with surface gravity that is more than three times stronger. So if you're not a champion weightlifter who's used to carrying around a few times your body weight on your shoulders, you're probably going to be slammed to the ground by your own weight. Depending on where you were when Earth turned into gold, this alone could seriously hurt or even kill you. Trees and artificial structures collapse under stress they were never meant to sustain, while birds and planes and all things that were able to fly or float splash to the ground all around you. And you're not the only thing weighed down by the greater gravity. The weight of the atmosphere and also atmospheric pressure yeah. nearly quadruples, which is a bad thing if you like living. On its own, this won't kill you. Scuba dive. I gotta think of that's a bad thing if you like living. <laughs> can comfortably breathe air at these pressures for a while, but unfortunately squeezing the atmosphere this much raises its temperature to 150 degrees Celsius, which is like the insides of an oven. The entire Earth's surface bakes. Again, the same sort of problem, just not extreme. We're just talking really high temperatures enough to kill everything, not enough to make a molten bowl of plasma that's going to spit out a bunch of stuff <laughs> from an implosion anything and everything. There is no escape. Gold may be a metal, but it's about three times weaker than steel and also very malleable, which makes it very bad mountain material. The tallest mountains that can be supported are now only about two kilometers high, 
so whole ranges compress as their own weight basically crushes their base. It's hard to say what happens here. We're probably in for giant earthquakes and landslides as the planet is squeezed into a new shape. And it's not just mountain ranges. The differences between the continents and the ocean floor level out, causing the ocean basins to... So I guess this trip just affected the continents and the inside. It didn't actually affect the oceans. We're not having molten gold or anything like that. Okay. Flow sending massive tidal waves over the Earth's surface. What remains is a planet made of gold, entirely covered by an ocean three kilometers deep, a super hot atmosphere, and a lot of dead people. Hmm, okay, there may be a lesson to take away here, but we're not sure what it is. We did all the maths though. It's in our sources document if you want to take a look. <laughs> if you learned anything in this video, let us know what it was. So, as you might know, the things we sell in our shop all right, now another promotional thing. Um, I think the thing you learned is just, it's kind of challenging to do one of these thought experiments depending on what kind of rules you make your magic. It also reminds me of one of those um, genie problems, like a genie gives you superpowers or something. It has to give you all the required secondary powers. Like if you wanted to run really, really fast, you'd also need to be physically strong enough to um, withstand all of the uh, compression from, break from breaking the sound barrier, for instance. So it's basically magicians probably weren't physics majors <laughs> when they uh, um, designed like the magic for the purpose of their story or anything like that. You kind of have to, just to be a little hand waving that a wizard did it or <laughs> something like that, but I love this video, the idea of trying to use um, science to explain how magic works, uh, kind of like uh, sus using suspension of disbelief to uh, explain how technology in a sci-fi universe works, which I find absolutely fascinating. Let me know what you thought about this down in the comments and if you learned anything. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.